Welcome to the exciting rebirth of Superstar featuring choose your membership rate as low as just $3 a month. At Superstar, you get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes, class passes for Synchronicity University, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the Superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of January 29, 2023. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a remarkable astrological week, without a doubt. Big moves happening in the sky now. Um, I did want to start off by saying, of course, the thing that is very much on the surface for a lot of us out there, at least astrologically speaking, can be summed up by the fact that we do have Jupiter in Aries moving closer and closer to Chiron in Aries, and that conjunction will perfect on the 12th of March of this year. Now, I actually recorded a video, I've recorded about an hour of footage just around uh, what is happening in terms of in the US right now with police brutality and how we are being encouraged to become aware of the wounding and the wounded and the wounder, and especially in relation to understanding physical shows of power and uh, the warriors that are in our world, including police officers and soldiers, etc. And so I dive into that very deeply. It should publish right around the same time as this video, or it'll publish a day later. So please be on the lookout for that. I hope that ends up being meaningful to you in some way. But as we start this week, I know a lot of us are feeling a lot of emotion and I just want to send so many of us love and healing at this time because we as humanity really are moving towards acknowledging where hurt has occurred and where it is being perpetuated uh, and the far-reaching consequences of wounding and hurt and abuse as well. And so it is going to be now that as we navigate this time, we do so with as much grace will end up helping us. But also, I do think that the acknowledgement of our feelings is the gift of sensitivity. And that ultimately is what defines the best of the human experience. It is our sensitivity and our empathy that is what defines the best of humanity. It's what humanity is itself. But it's when we lose that, that we lose our humanity at the same time. And so I do feel and I hope that we can keep contact with that sensitivity uh, while navigating this time, moving towards not just an awareness of wounding, but my hope is real and meaningful and lasting healing as well. Again, be on the lookout for that video that should publish right around the time of this video or a day later. Having said that though, with this week, we do have some profound energies playing out and we have some distinct characteristics playing out at the very beginning of the week and the very end of the week as well. The beginning of the week holds energies that are empowering and easy and fun and exciting as well. But as we get to the end of the week, the sky kicks up again and we get energies that have more tension to them, and also an element of uncomfortable surprise that may have a scrambling, but ultimately do set the stage for the breakthroughs promised at next week's full moon. Now, I'll talk about that full moon when we get there next week, and of course, be on the lookout for February's horoscopes. When they publish, they will talk about that full moon energy for your sign as well. I hope you absolutely love them. Having said that, let's focus in on what is happening this week. At the very beginning of the week, you know, it's so interesting that two celestial events are taking place so closely uh, in terms of time-wise in the sky that it's practically simultaneous. And uh, when I reflect back, just on the last couple of weeks, we've been seeing this type of phenomenon with events taking place that are different in different areas of the sky in very different signs but they happen almost simultaneously, within minutes of each other, within an hour of each other or so. 
And so I think it's so interesting. It's almost part of the universe making us aware that um, at some times it can feel like a lot of things are going right. And sometimes it can feel like a lot of different areas want our attention or are worthy of celebration as well. And that life isn't a limited experience, but rather it is a very rich and uh, an experience that speaks to and is lived in many different ways and in many different areas of life. As much as there is the sheer joy of connecting with others, there can also be simultaneously a joy of keeping a promise to yourself, having a goal, feeling a sense of achievement to something that matters to you. And these are the types of energies that we begin the week with. So first, it is going to be the sun speaking in supreme harmony with Mars. I love this energy for us because it is so fun. It's energizing. And there's a spontaneous quality here as well. Both sun and Mars are in air signs. It is the sun in Aquarius and it is Mars in Gemini. The sun in Aquarius happens right around this time every year, and this is a very social energy. It represents our thinking about each other uh, and our connection to the collective, but it also speaks to an acceptance of self, being willing to be ourselves, authentically so, but also giving other people permission to do the same. And it is the energy of Mars in Gemini that We've actually been hosting for a little while now already, um, and that is because we've been in an extended Mars retrograde season. Uh, Mars went into Gemini way back in August of 2022 and has spent and continues to spend an unusually long time in air sign Gemini. And so this is bringing a lot of focus to how we communicate with each other, the things that we say, how things are said, uh, the spontaneous connections we make with each other as well, but how we communicate the means of communication and what is being communicated, whether it's through traditional media, social media, or otherwise, well, all of that has taken on a certain fervor, yes, a certain passion as well, and a, a certain sense that more of us are determined to share our voice to express ourselves in a way that feels right for us. With this connection to Aquarius and the sun in Aquarius, uh, this represents a moment when more of us want to share with the masses uh, in a larger sense, with more people. Uh, more of us want to feel part of a larger community and will share and communicate and express as part of connecting us to others, especially on the level of ideas. That can be a great uniting principle. Where it is that we're able to and willing to talk to others, well, we can now feel a sense of not just community, but also meaningful and authentic friendship as well. With energy like this, just being willing to engage your environment can remind you that really none of us is alone in the world. None of us. If you're here, it means that there is love. You are here from love and in love. And it is in our social connections to others, even when they seem very light uh, on the surface, just acquaintances or a nod. Those are acts of love that we do not just for each other, but we do it for ourselves to remind ourselves that we're not isolated, that we're not alone. And with energy like this, it is that very reminder that fills us with an enthusiasm to live to connect, an enthusiasm to more fully be ourselves and know that we are welcome in all kinds of spaces, wherever it is that we go. Now, it is like 31 minutes later, literally, that we are going to have an exact trine, again, a supremely harmonious alignment between Mercury and Uranus. Now, if this sounds familiar, it really should. And that is because, well, this is the third and final time that these energies are connecting in this way as part of the larger Mercury retrograde season. So Mercury went into shadow back in the middle of December. And it was towards the end of December that Mercury went retrograde, went direct on the 18th of January. And so now as Mercury is direct, we'll leave shadow next week, which means that 
the path that Mercury was retrograde on is now traveling direct on. But once we get into next week, once Mercury leaves shadow, Mercury is in brand new territory. We are done with any of the learning and lessons and wrapping up loose ends that the Mercury retrograde season would have indicated. Well, this represents wrapping up things in a way that feels very fortunate to us. When I see Mercury trine Uranus, I think of this as good news. Like that's what it means sort of in a very immediate sense for all of us. It represents good news all around. And with Mercury in the sign of Capricorn, Capricorn having to do with power and business and having to do with hierarchies and tradition and an understanding of what it is that brings stability to our world and to our lives, but it also has to do with meaningful manifestation. It has to do with being able to keep a promise to yourself to know that you are worth taking action towards something that you want and by being diligent, being able to earn it. And from there, building a healthy sense of self-respect in the process that comes from keeping promises to yourself. Well, with this trying to Uranus, that whole process is understood differently in some way. Uranus is a planet that has to do with the future and it has to do with new ideas. And of course, Mercury is about ideas, but it's more about the immediacy of sharing them. And as we see this, it's almost like we get new perspectives on things that have been tradition. We get new understandings of what healthy ambition might look like for us as a collective, but also in our own lives as well. We get a renewed perspective where it comes to what success is going to mean for us defining it in new ways and in our own terms. Ultimately, this energy can be one that does move very quickly. There could be good news all around for a lot of us, but yes, very likely it is news that feels like it magnifies stability, but also is part of some ongoing situation that we felt is improving and can be more improved uh, that's been with us since the middle of December. Just now, we get some answers. We get some insights that make a big difference and leave us feeling happy. Now, the sky, for the most part, other than lunar aspects, really stays quiet throughout the week until we get to the end of the week when we have major planetary activity kicking up. And it starts with the sun speaking in a conversation of tension with Uranus. Um, as much as I love the energy that happens at the beginning of the week, especially Mercury trine Uranus, I love that for the good news and the easy connections it promises. Look, Sun square Uranus is one of the more challenging energies. I do want to be straightforward with you on that. And it is this very energy that does suggest surprises that feel uncomfortable at first, uh, developments that feel like they come out of nowhere that leave us feeling uncomfortable, but also may have a scrambling in some way. But the thing is that where there are squares, there is motivation, there is determination for meaningful change to occur as well. Where there are squares, it means activity is happening, means that we're translating the frustration into action to improve our circumstances. Now, the need to change things could come on very quickly. For some, this energy is going to be more about your own impulsivity as well. That may take you by surprise. But ultimately, this is energy of truth, your truth, you being yourself, no matter how that might be viewed or seen by others. We're going to be that much more determined to embody some truth of who we are, no matter what anyone else has to say about it. And so we may just see some people being quite rebellious at this time, but there'll be a lot of people who are also really inspiring in their determination to be true to whom it is that they are. Of course, I got to say this Aquarian energy being highlighted at this time. Uh, Aquarian energy is seen as uh, energy of equality and revolutionary energy as well. Uh, think about the energy that's been with us since 2020 with Saturn moving through the sign of Aquarius. There's been this rise in awareness around what equality looks like in theory and practice. Uh, well, some of that very likely is going to kick up at this time. 
as I started this video saying, of course, a lot of us are thinking about that right now. Um, at the beginning of the week, it's being expressed and implemented in a way that seems very harmonious and easy. So that represents the peaceful protests that are taking place, the ways in which we are able to um, express our ideas and feel connected as a result of where meaningful change can happen. All of that is in focus at the start of the week. But as we get to the end of the week, it does look like there's a, a more rebellious spirit. We are moving towards uh, the energy of next week's full moon. That full moon is also square Uranus. It is in the sign of Leo. And Leo has to do with the individual um, and their worthiness. You know, being able to be in touch with and knowing your worthiness your rights, your sense of self, and where it is that there are uh, limitations to how much people feel that they can be themselves or how much they feel they are respected or not respected, well, a lot of emotion is likely to stir with that full moon as well. Now, of course, as I said, I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way, but I did want to give you a heads up because this ends up being incredibly important energy. It is what happens this week that sets the stage for that full moon. And ultimately, with all that's happening in the world right now and all the emotion that people are feeling, my hope is that what happens now does set the stage for an energy of breakthrough, an energy that ultimately empowers us to own our worthiness and ultimately to own our power. The power of our presence itself can be remarkable as we move towards the end of the week and into next as well. Now, I do want to add, considering so much air energy this week, including the sun square Uranus, well, to me, that also represents new ideas, revolutionary ways in which we're connecting with other people uh, and we're magnifying our voices as well. That can be one of the more empowered ways in which that energy can manifest as well. Now, it is going to be at the very end of the week that we are going to have Venus square Mars. This energy can be rather tense, but it's also electric. And this is very passionate energy. Um, it's so interesting how much we're able to connect with people who share our passions as well. Well, those connections will likely not just be intellectual, but they may have a very strong uh, romantic component to them also, uh, considering what is taking place in the sky. Of course, Venus is in the sign of Pisces at the height of her power, at the exaltation of her power at that. And this represents her being able to bring forward her very best qualities. But it is Mars now in square configuration to that Venus uh, that brings with it tension, but also attraction as well. And I feel that it represents a sense of a lot of us getting in touch with whatever it is that we feel is our own unique beauty and finding passion and purpose from that place. It is a lot of us standing in our own unique beauty that ends up being the thing that is most attractive about us. You know, it's said a lot. It's said constantly that confidence is the thing that makes a person most attractive. I think that truth is going to be especially magnified for us as we get to the end of the week. In so many ways, so much of the energy now is saying, be in your power. Feel good about whom it is that you are, even while holding the humility to know that there's more to learn, there's more to grow, there's more to be. Because ultimately from that place, we can make all kinds of connections with other people, connections of mind and heart and body as well. What I love about this week for us, there's so much here. It's a powerful and meaningful astrological moment. I am going to say I absolutely love the energy at the beginning of the week. The sun, trine, Mars is to me a big energy, the star of the show in how it is that it feels positively empowering and exciting. You add to this Mercury trine Uranus like 31 minutes later, uh, this energy ends up being that which feels as if we're able to tap into the best of ideas, yes, but also the best of ambition. 
being able to define ourselves and see ourselves as worthy of achieving the things that we decide we truly want. Well, that in turn informs our actions differently. It encourages us to cultivate meaningful confidence step by step towards the attainment of what it is that we want most now and moving forward from here. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And to prove it to you, here are some of my most recent favorite comments. Thank you to everybody who likes, who comments, who subscribes, who shares, who thumbs up. All of it means so much. I'm so grateful for it. Thank you. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you in your sign, log on to NadiaShawSuperstars.com where you get expanded, exclusive video scopes each and every week for each and every sign for as low as just $3 a month with Choose Your Membership Rate. Now, higher tiers get you things like all access passes to Synchronicity University events, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space at NadiaShawSuperstars.com. Links are in the description below. Synchronicity University has some incredible programs happening right now, and I'm giving you a little bit of a sneak peek. We've got incredible programs coming up that are going to be launched and announced in this week as well. And so there's so much to look forward to, really big courses, and of course, they are going to be choose your tuition rate. So turn your notifications on, be ready. You will only have about a month, about four weeks or so, because it is February, the shortest month. Yeah, there's only going to be four weeks to choose your tuition rate. All those retrogrades turned everything on their head. But here we are. We're going to launch, uh, of course, continuing to bring you incredible astrological education and inspiration in a way that's accessible to the masses. That is a big part of what I do with Superstar. It's a big part of what I do with Synchronicity University. And so I hope you absolutely love them. Get excited. We've got big superstar teachers and we've got incredible topics that you're absolutely going to love. A course on prediction, a course on romance and relationships. A lot of people have been asking for that and so much more incredible speakers are on the docket as well. Again, I hope you absolutely love it. And thank you. I am going to keep it short and sweet for this particular video because as I said earlier, I just uh, recorded an hour's worth of video on uh, Chiron in Aries and uh, police brutality and looking at the astrology of what's happening right now and what we're moving towards over the course of this year and beyond. And I got quite emotional, so I actually had to stop the camera for a little while. Uh, but, you know, just like everybody else out there, I am feeling this moment in the collective and I feel so sad for us. <laughs> That's what I feel right now. So, I hope that this continues to be part of us moving towards as part of the mystery. Sometimes there can be a lot of pain on the road towards greater love and greater wisdom. And my hope is that we get there to that end uh, with as much grace and patience and love for each other as possible. So thank you again for watching. Thank you for being here. I'm so grateful for it. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.